Water Four Way is a name given to a road between the towns of Armadale and Dorigo in the New England high country of New South Wales. Along the way, it gives access to some of the state's most spectacular national parks with their crags, cliffs, chasms and many waterfalls. We made Armadale our base to explore the parks in the western half. Armadale is approximately halfway between Sydney and Brisbane and is the administrative centre for the Northern Tablelands section. After picking up a load of information from the Armadale Visitor Centre, we decided to check out our first waterfall there and then. As it was already mid-afternoon, we chose the nearby Dangars Gorge in Oxley Wild River National Park. The gorge is just 21 kilometres southeast of Armadale on the Dangars Lee Road. At the falls turn off, we noticed an elaborate monument and pulled over for a closer look. The entrance is in the form of an eastern temple and invites people to Nirvana, the place of peace. The monument was built by Alfred Haraldson Perrett, who lost his eldest son in World War I to do something to keep forever green the memory of those poor boys who would never return. The waters of Dangars Falls plunge 120 metres down into the ravine. There are several extensive walks in the area, but we were happy to stick to the shorter ones that gave views of the falls. The path to the left of the car park goes to the gorge lookout and picnic shelter. There is also the gorge rim walk, which leads to the very edge of the falls. Looking across the gorge, we can see the platform of the Rock Wallaby Lookout. There was still some daylight left, so we thought we might tackle this one as well, though it took a bit of fast talking on my behalf. Once across the river, the track climbs up to a gate in the dingo fence. The north-south dingo exclusion fence, built in the early 1880s, extends nearly 650 kilometres. This vantage point gave us a closer view of the top of the falls. Back down at the river was a peaceful scene as the Pied Cormorant settled in for the evening. Baker's Creek Falls are accessed from the Waterfall Way via the Hillgrove Turnoff. These rather secluded falls have been the site of some horrific murders. The first was in 1888, a miner by the name of John Stapleton, whose body was found near the top of the falls. In 1993, three men were shot dead and two of the bodies were thrown off the 60 metre high lookout. The three men were innocent victims of the murderous rampage that eventually ended at the Kangai siege. Further east along the waterfall way is the turn off to Wallamombi Gorge, Falls and Pitnik area. Wollamombi is very popular with its large picnic area, camping ground and huge gorge with both the Wollamombi and Chandler Falls. In fact, the gorge is where the two rivers meet. Chandler Track, which is 2.5 kilometres return, takes you past the Wallamombi Falls lookout and checks viewpoint.
The track then continues along the gorge rim to the south. From then on, there are steep sections of track that need to be taken carefully. But it's definitely worthwhile as there is an amazing view up the gorge with the Chandler Falls in the distance. The Wallamombi Walk leads to the head of the gorge and is four kilometres return. A steel bridge crosses the Wallamombi River, followed by a decent flight of stairs. The track then continues to the Chandler River, Gorge and Falls. Approximately halfway between Armado and Dorigo is the access road to the New England National Park, the largest of the parks in the New England High Country. The rainforests here are part of the Gondwana Rainforest of Australia World Heritage Area providing a link to the ancient pre-human world. There are several walking tracks in the park to lead deep into pockets of these ancient forests. A short walk of only 200 metres takes you to Point Lookout renowned for its distant views. Point Lookout, the park's highest elevation, overlooks the headwaters of Belgian River, and on a clear day, the view can extend as far as the coast. The park was dedicated in 1935 and officially opened in 1937. A little further along and on the northern side of the Waterfall Way is Guy Fawkes River National Park and Ebor Falls. The falls are on two levels and can be viewed from upper and lower platforms as the waters of Guy Fawkes River exit the tableland in spectacular fashion. It is believed that the river was named by explorer and settler Major Edward Park after he camped near the river on Guy Fawkes Day, November 5, 1845. The next day we left our base in Armadale and travelled the length of the waterfall way to Dorigo. Dorigo is a small town with a population of not much over a thousand people. The dairy industry and tourism are its mainstay. Once we'd set up camp in the showgrounds campground, we headed out in search of more waterfalls. The first, close to town, was Dengar Falls, not to be confused with Dengar's Falls back in Armadale. The Pitney Grounds are set in a very attractive wooded area, and there was even a labyrinth there to test your puzzle skills. Dengar Falls is a cascade waterfall on the Bealsdown River. Although they are quite small, for a short time after rain they can be spectacular. Just a couple of kilometres south of town 
is the turn-off to the Dorigo Rainforest Centre, which is situated on the edge of Dorigo National Park. Once through the Interpretive Centre, you can walk straight out onto the Skywalk. The 70 metre boardwalk soars over the edge of the escarpment, some 21 metres above the rainforest below. The views take in Belling Valley to the coast, with deep valleys and gorges of the Rosewood River Rainforest Basin. Within the park are several waterfalls and many walking tracks. If you are keen to walk all the tracks, you will need to allow a few days. We chose a couple of the shorter ones. The Lyrebird Link Track starts at the Rainforest Centre. We passed huge entanglements of vines and moss-covered logs. Bird nest ferns grow high in huge trees with impressive buttress roots. We even encountered a goanna basking in a sunny patch on the track. We also did a section of the Wonga Walk, accessed from the Glade Picnic Area car park. We aimed to reach Crystal Shower Falls, a walk of 2.6 kilometres return. It was a warm day and we appreciated the shelter from the sun provided by the thick canopy overhead. The constant moist conditions of the rainforest promote various fungi which come in fascinating shapes. There were glimpses of bush turkeys foraging in the forest. We knew there were lyrebirds about as we'd heard their calls, but to see one beside the track was a real bonus. The lyrebird completely ignored us as it concentrated on digging up a tasty morsel. Lyrebirds are considered as old Australians as fossils have been discovered that date back more than 15 million years. Crystal Shower Falls would have to be one of the most photogenic falls in the area, though modest in size. Tumbling over a cave draped in vines and creepers, the falls can be viewed from the swing bridge or from the cave below. On the way back to town, we took the side road to a small park with a very pleasant view over the undulating farmlands. The park is dedicated to Trooper Mark Donaldson, the first soldier to receive the Victoria Cross for Australia medal. Donaldson, who grew up in Dorigo, enlisted in the army in 2002 and has seen service in East Timor, Iraq and Afghanistan. The Victoria Cross for Australia was instituted in the Australian Honours System in 1991. Just before turning into the campground, I caught a glimpse of a steam loco in the distance. In fact, there was a whole row of them that went on and on and on. The Dorigo Steam Railway and Museums collection includes 79 locomotives, 280 passenger carriages and freight wagons, 19 rail motors and a silver comet. The list goes on and on. It is claimed to be the largest collection of its kind in the world. Unfortunately, it cannot be open to the public 
as the museum must first meet the requirements of the local council relative to car parks, toilets, street widening and road intersections, at last count totalling $3 million. Settling in at our camp for the evening, we enthusiastically agreed that our venture from Armadale to Dorigo, following the scenic waterfall way, was one of New South Wales' must-do highlights.